Okay, so Capcom uh, fairly recently, we're a bit late to the party on this one, but they, it isn't uh, out yet. Uh, they announced um, an arcade stick, or two sort of arcade sticks built into one. It's called the Capcom Home Arcade. It's due to come out um, on the 25th of October, um, so it isn't out yet. And um, it's going to retail at £200 here in the uh, UK, uh, which is a hell of a lot of money. It's uh, going to have 16 built-in games on it. You're going to get your uh, Final Fight, you're going to get your Street Fighter. You're also going to get um, Alien vs Predator, I believe, which is is a nice thing to see because they've obviously had to jump over hurdles to get the, the license for that. So I do like to see um, effort put into to get these sort of licensed games like they have done with the Mega Drive Mini. It's always nice to see the effort put in, but uh, for 200 quid, uh, 16 games does seem um, a little bit uh, slim. But um, I guess people will be relying on uh, the sort of hacked uh, stuff to get, to get more stuff on there. But uh, what's everyone's thoughts on uh, the Capcom Home Arcade? Are you interested? Will you be buying it, uh, Brian? Not at that price. <laughs> 369 bucks. I just saw it online. Um, wow. I could. I'm actually personally. I've got reasons that I'm not wanting uh, to pour money into something like this. Uh, I'm actually in discussions with an arcade cabinet maker right now as we speak um interestingly enough he knew about my channel and he said he was a fan so that was cool um but nah man like 369 bucks i'd want more than those games um for that price uh it, i mean that's a good range of games but it's not enough nearly enough for me to want to pour that kind of coin down i mean they haven't even got super street fighter 2 in amongst that list that's that's a sim that that needed to be on there Ben, any thoughts? Yeah, initially when I first saw it, I was I was I was pretty excited for it. Even, but when 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 the price tag came along, I initially thought there may be more titles actually been built into it um, after seeing the price tag. Personally, that's not very many games for two hundred pounds. Uh, <laughs> not very many retro games for two hundred pounds, um, or old, older arcade games even. And uh, yeah, and it, the actual look of the of the unit. I'm not so sure about because I'm a bit dubious about how big it is. A bit dubious about how much space each player is going to get. Um, I know you don't really get that much space in, a, in a, a genuine sort of arcade cab for two players, but sometimes you do have outstretched ones where they have little little corners and stuff. So you can get a little bit, bit, bit of space. I'm just dubious about how big it is. I'm very, it, I've just got this idea of this image that it's just smaller than a keyboard or something. It's, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit worried. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be quite big. I think what would have been quite good if it maybe was uh, detachable, so that because I guess in most people are going to play this on their own. Right? It's a sad state of affairs to say that people sort of play games on their own nowadays and don't Just really. Call have, it out. Yeah, they don't really have friends. Over. No one play, uh, plays games uh, in the same room anymore. I'd love I'd love to go back to those days, but it's going to be one unit, and uh, also the shape of it is quite interesting as well because it's the Capcom logo, and they've sort of they've got like. Um, a yeah. curved sort of design so player two is going to be different to player one and that's going to cause all sort of arguments that's going to go back to the player two giving the crap controller you know back in the day <laughs> non-official controller yeah so uh, player, player one i was just going to say i'm just trying to picture that meeting in capcom when they um came up with the design i oh, know we'll just make the console the, the logo what do you mean no just just make it the logo <laughs> with sticks coming out of it and buttons oh you mean like the capcom yes the capcom logo Brilliant! Let's do it. They greenlit it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. they could have done all sorts of interesting stuff. They could have had all different, like uh, camouflage, not camouflage, a collage of the games, uh, just all over the console, uh, all over the unit. They could have done lots of things. It's, even if it was just the logo, it would have maybe looked okay, but it probably should have just been, you know, a, a cuboid, like a straight thing, not with all those grooves in it. Because I'm, I'm just trying to imagine where your hand would sit, and it'd be different for two players. So in a competitive environment, there might be some arguments there. Interestingly enough, the it's emulation, and the apparently the emulation they're using they don't own. So that's going to be interesting to see if there's going to be any um, ramifications from that decision. Um, and another thing that I've noticed on here, it, it is Wi-Fi enabled. So the 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 yeah, I know, DLC. The, <laughs> <laughs> so well, maybe I'm hoping like you can download new games. Um, but you will be able to upload your high scores to a worldwide high score leaderboard to see you, those things I never look at because I always suck. Like you came thirty thousand, 
I'm like, yeah, great. That really, you know, gets me spurred on. But the list of games is interesting. Uh, you got 1944, Alien vs. Predator, like you mentioned. Um, Armored Warriors, I'm not familiar with that. Capcom Sports Club. Captain Commando, I, I don't know. I, I hardly know any of these, actually. Um, Cyberbots, Full Metal Madness. Darkstalkers, now I know that. Um, Echo Fighters. Final Fight, that's the, for me the main attraction here out of all these. Mm -hmm. Ghouls and Ghosts, Giga Wing, Mega Man, The Power Battle, interesting. Um, Pro Gears, Street Fighter 2, Hyper Fight, Hyper Fighting, sorry. Why didn't they go with Super Street Fighter 2? I, I don't know. Maybe it's a different board they use. Um, Strider and then Super, bleh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo there. So that rounds up the, the, the lot, 16 games. A fairly like solid uh, lineup of games, but I do fear uh, with the Wi Fi enabled that they're going to sell you more. And for 200 quid, you should already be including uh, a lot of those games on there. It's cool to have a nice. Uh, it should be doubled at. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, when you think it. about the Mega Drive Mini, I think that has 40 games on it. I think I'm right in saying. And that's going to retail here at 70 pounds. So for 40 games for 70 pounds compared to 200 for 16. I know you're getting a big arcade stick, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And this, this yeah. is a UK thing, I believe. This has been all done from the um, the the office of Capcom in the UK. I, I'm not sure if that's true or not, but um, I'm just trying. Coach Media are the ones that are behind this. Oh yeah, Coach. Yeah, they're the distributors of it, aren't they? Or yeah, yeah. Or they, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't think this is something that Capcom in Japan are really fully behind. It's just more sort of a Western thing. I don't know if the this. That con that controller shape being in the shape of the Capcom logo does not seem like something that the Japanese would have greenlit. I, I just don't think. Yeah, I mean, it might be um, a worthwhile investment if you could, because I think it's powered by USB. So maybe um, if it's also an input uh, by USB, you could maybe use the arcade stick for uh, for different things uh, to play different games, which might be make it worthwhile slightly. But um, yeah, for that for that price, it's uh, it's difficult to. Uh, to justify it and also the buttons seemed where they've got, got the logo the colouring of the buttons seem all camouflaged in so if you don't yeah. memorise <laughs> yeah, where right, the buttons yeah. are like on a keyboard you could probably blind type um, but um, where, where you've got an arcade stick and all the buttons are sort of camouflaged in you sort of have to memorise where your yeah. fingers go rather than visually see where the buttons are which might be a slight problem as well I'm not big on the, on the design <laughs> I have to say but it's original. It can't, you can't um, fault him on that. It's certainly unique. And I, I got a feeling that this might be worth more later down the track because I, I got a feeling it's not going to sell and it's just going to be one of these collector items later on down the track. It's just going to be, you, you'll see it for going like three times the amount um, later in box. So maybe or it might go down the yeah. way of the playstation classic where you find it in a bargain bucket which i'm hoping for then i might pick it up if it's like <laughs> half the price i'm hoping but i honestly don't see that that's going to be the case with this one um because not a um playstation was more more mainstream which is my my um logic behind that that comment um whereas yeah. this thing is really uh, um for niche hardcore arcade gamers this is not going to be something that mum and dad just going into the shops are going to see and go oh yeah i might get bobby that for his christmas present it's not nah, it's especially at that price <laughs> yeah it's going to be uh, strictly pre-order only it's not it's not you're going to find it on the sh on the shelves no, like, no exactly in, in store. No. and and on the website i just noticed that yes they do make a special mention um for alien predator and alien versus predator uh copyrighted 20th century fox so they yes did have to go for that extra bit of effort just to get that licensing um but, which is why you'll never see x-men and um yeah. and uh, uh, versus street fighter on these uh compilations which is so sad because those games rocked in the arcade yeah the marvel versus capcom yeah that would have been great to have on there those ones, yeah although I'm, I'm quite surprised about this uh, super puzzle fighter 2 turbo being in there when there's so few <laughs> games there's, so, there's so, so only 16 games and that one's in there it seems like an odd one to, to include to me I don't remember seeing it in the arcades very often. No, it was, um, for me, it was more of a PlayStation 2 thing. I yeah, mean, yeah. PlayStation 1, sorry, I should say. Um, sorry, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it didn't seem to me like an... It was an arcade game, yes, but yeah. it wasn't 
known for being in the arcade, I, I think is what we're trying to say. Um, yeah, they, they've just got such an extensive back catalogue, haven't they, Capcom, that they could have gone with. Um, some of these dis- these uh, games that they went with are a little bit of a head scratch. And, and again, it should mean 32 games. I, I, I don't understand why they're making you pay 300 odd bucks and you only get 16 games. It's just, I can't, I just can't. <laughs> the only thing I can see is, is to sell you more later down the line. With the yeah. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Well, there is the uh, the possibility of um, it being cracked as well, and adding much more to it, like with the other, like as you mentioned earlier, like the other mini sort of the mini uh, NES and Super Nintendo and stuff that people cracked them and added their own ROMs and stuff. That's that's an enticement. It's not an official enticement, but it, it's something that everyone's thinking about already. I'm sure. I think better bang for buck would be the mini Neo Geo arcade machine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it did get a lot of negative reviews, but um, uh, there are some also people going online saying, you know what, it's not as bad as what those reviewers were saying. It's actually quite playable. So, um, and it's not even uh, half the price of this. It's it's less than half the cost of this thing. So, I, I think I know which one I'd rather get if I was uh, forced to choose between one or the other. So to, just to summarise, none of us are buying this then. <laughs> it's a no from me. <laughs> it, it's, it's a it's a possibility with our channel. You might you, you're probably going to see it appear on our channel. I think at least Chris is going to get one, <laughs> and, and myself possibly, very possibly. He'll, he'll flog it off on eBay for sure straight after. I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> he's still got the he's still got the Pac-Man cab. He's still got that. It's actually uh, behind me. But yeah, he's still got that. Okay. So, yeah, it, it might appear on our channel, but it, I'm, the overall feeling I'm getting is that I'm, not many people I know are going to get one. I was thinking if it goes cheaper, I might get one, but uh, I didn't know that about it's pre-order only. You can only order it that way, so it, it probably won't. And they'll probably just uh, order them to demand or make them to demand. Me, as, so, as, as far as I'm aware, it's pre-order only at this point. But I might be wrong. It, it might appear in store, but it's it's so niche. It's very unlikely. That Were you... They'll just. Sorry, so I just got to ask you: Were you big into the arcades at the time? Like, do you have any memories of any of these games? Or no, I was more of a home console person. We did have arcades around here, but um, they were more sort of you played arcades when you went uh, on your yearly holiday. So you do you go once a year. Um, they're not like round every okay. corner here. So uh, I did a little bit, but more of a home console guy. So this one isn't exciting me too much. But it's always nice to play with an arcade stick. It's a unique experience, you know. Well, I think one point uh, that needs to be made is that this is probably the first time that Strider has been released in its arcade original form for a home market. I don't recall it being the arcade machine being released, uh, or arcade version, I should say, um, because everyone was just happy with the Mega Drive version and not so much the... the was there a Nintendo? There was an NES version. It was just terrible. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, I remember arcade machines were everywhere. They were absolutely everywhere. Yeah. They're in the ch- they're in chip shops. They're in post offices. Yeah. They're just everywhere. Um, but then the, when the nineties crawled around, uh, not so much. They weren't around so much. And then the two thousands, early two thousands, forget about it. As sort of said, I think it's more of your annual holiday. You might see them at, uh, at the, at the you know, the amusement arcades at the beaches and stuff, stuff like that. So that's the same with here in Australia. But uh, just today, I was at. I was just at the beach uh, today and I spotted that they had in this uh, closed restaurant, um, which is like one of these pizza shops that open up at night, they had a, an arcade machine there that was free to play. Cool. That's different. I wasn't expecting to see that. Um, if you saw, i tell you what, I can't imagine what it would be like if they had a, a free to play arcade machine back in the 80s. I, I don't think you'd get kids out of there. <laughs> 